Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to show you how easy it is to create animation with MetaHuman Animator in Unreal and import that animation data into your MetaHuman in Blender. If you look at the official documentation for MetaHuman Animator, you'll see there's several ways that you can generate animation. You can do real-time animation, animation from depth data. They had support for animation for mono video now. And what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is actually just the audio-driven animation. You will achieve the highest quality animation from the depth data. Epic has some documentation on this as well as some videos on their YouTube. And Bad Decision Studio has created a tutorial on how you can do this with just your iPhone. And they guide you through the entire process. So shout out to them and we'll leave a link to their video in the description. With that out of the way, let me show you how simple this pipeline can be. In this tutorial, I'm going to be working with Unreal 5.6.1. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Edit, Plugins, Search for MetaHuman. You're going to want MetaHuman Animator, MetaHuman Animation Calibration Processing, and then you're going to want MetaHuman Animator Depth Processing. And this is actually a plugin that you're going to first have to get off of Fab. So you want to find out the Fab Store and then install it to your engine. Then you can enable this, MetaHuman Core Tuck. And you're going to want to enable MetaHuman Creator so that we have a placeholder MetaHuman that we can visualize our animation on. So enable that. And then MetaHuman Live Link. MetaHuman SDK, and then you can go ahead and restart. Dial the way, I'm just going to make a new folder for the tutorial. Tutorial. And here I go to MetaHuman. I'm going to create a MetaHuman character. I'm going to call this Bruce. Open it up. And then I'm going to get prompted to enable these missing uh, settings. So I'm going to go to presets and I'm going to enable them. So I'm going to go ahead and click restart and save. All right, now that it's restarted, I'm gonna go ahead and reopen the Bruce MetaHuman. And we actually have a tutorial that goes into more depth on MetaHuman Creator and how you can use custom DNA to make custom MetaHumans. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to use one of the presets, Bruce. I'm gonna create the full rig, and then I'm going to download the texture sources, just the 2K ones. All right, with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and save the character. I'm gonna to go to the assembly option. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the MetaHuman in the actual Unreal project. So I'm going to click assemble. All right, now that that is assembled in our project, the second thing we're gonna do is a DCC export. And for the output folder, I'm just gonna paste in this folder that I have here. And I'm just gonna uncheck bake makeup and I'm going to do assemble. And so what that did is it created a Bruce folder in that folder, and then it has the head DNA and the body DNA, as well as the texture files for this character. And we're going to use this later. But now I'm just going to go ahead and close this. And you can see when we did that UE cinematic assembly option that it placed our MetaHuman here in our project. So I'll show you why we did that here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and click MetaHuman. MetaHuman Performance. And the last thing I'm going to do is just drag that is a WAV file that I have here into the project. And this is actually all we're going to use to create the MetaHuman facial animation. So if I open up the performance, I choose audio. For the audio, I choose our clip. And then these other subbies are fine. And then for the visualization mesh, we will choose Bruce. I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And this is why I assembled him in the actual project. So we actually have a character that we can look at when we're processing our footage. So with that said, and just all these default options, I'm going to go ahead and click process. To the last I grapple with thee. So that's actually looking pretty good. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to disable the automatic head movements. And then for the solve overrides for the mood, I'm actually going to change those to more of a anger as the as the mood and then i'm going to go ahead and hit process one more time to the last i grapple with thee from hell's heart i stab at thee so that's looking pretty good so all we need to do to get this into blender is you have to click on this element face control board control rig right click on that export control rig to fbx and then i'm just going to call this bruce I'm going to save the file with FBX 2020. And then the critical part that you have to remember to do is for the control mappings, you've got to say MetaHuman control mappings. Then hit export. 
So the last thing I'm going to do is fire up Blender 4.5. And I already have the MetaHuman DNA add-on installed. So if you have questions about that, you can check out our tutorial on how to install it. But I have this panel here. And then if you remember that export we created earlier, I'm just going to drag the head DNA file into the viewport. And then there's check this option and include body. And that's also going to import the body DNA file. So here we are with our Bruce character in the scene. I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to the solid view. And right here, you can see that Bruce.fbx file we created. That's the actual faceboard animation data from Unreal. So I'm just going to grab this path. I'm going to hit N on the keyboard. And I'm going to go over here to the faceboard section. I'm going to click import. I'm going to paste that path. And I'm going to choose Bruce. And I'm going to keep these options. Now you can see if we actually look at the faceboard, we have the animation data in. And what I'm actually going to do is just split this. I'm going to go over here and choose video sequencer. I'm going to add a sound. I'm going to paste in that same folder and pull in this MP3 file and resize this a bit. Then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to adjust the start and end of the timeline. And then I'm going to go ahead and just play this back in Blender. To the last I grapple with thee. From hell's heart I stab at thee, for hate's sake, I spit my last breath at thee. And you can see it's dead simple to get your animation into the Blender viewport and evaluating. Now let's say you're happy with this animation, you've done all the tweaks and adjustments to it, and you want to render this in a path tracer in like cycles. In order to do that, you're going to want to bake all the animation that's on the face board down to the actual Blender data. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to switch to another file that already has a character prepped and ready to be rendered in cycles. So now I'm in this other Blender file that has this character. And I actually grabbed this character off a 3D scan store. They actually have some really nice assets that are already set up with materials and lighting in Blender. And I just went through the process of customizing the DNA and transferring the skinning over to the original model. So I went ahead and imported that same faceboard animation onto his faceboard. And so you can see that we have it here. Also, you can see the playback is slower because I really bumped up the subdivision surface levels. But what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and click this bake option. And this will be the name of the action. You can change it if you like. And I'm going to bake about to frame uh, 340. So what this is going to do is it's going to bake the bone transforms. It's also going to bake the shape key values and then the mask values on the actual head material. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And this is just going to bake for a second. And you can see once that finishes, all the animation data is now actually on these bones. And so if we scrub through, we have our animation. But if we go here and we disable rig logic evaluation on the rig, we can scrub through and we still have animation. And that's because the actual keyframes and all the data is on the actual uh, Blender objects. And we're not being driven in real time by the rig logic link with the faceboard. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, adjust the end frame and then where we're going to output these files. We can have a look at our camera that's set up there. And personally, what I like to do is I like to save a version uh, of this as the baked version so that we still have the unmodified original one with the face fork, just in case we need to tweak it. And then this would be the actual baked version. So I'm going to save that. And so now we are ready to go ahead and kick off a render. So I'm going to click render animation. To the last I grapple with thee, from hell's heart I stab at thee. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath at thee. 